I'm Jason Winning. In this video, I'll introduce you to Hypernomicon and some of its features. Towards the end of the video, I will show a concrete example of how these features pay off by stimulating your brain to creatively make more connections between ideas than it otherwise would. But first, to appreciate this, it is important to see what these features are and how they work together. Hypernomicon is a database system that keeps track of many of the kinds of information that academic researchers need to keep track of, such as works, authors, institutions, debates, positions, arguments, notes, and more. The basic unit of information that Hypernomicon stores in the database is called a record. For example, there will likely be one record in the database corresponding to a given author, one record corresponding to a given work, one record corresponding to a certain debate, and so on. Most of the tabs on the main Hypernomicon window correspond to types of records. For example, the Persons tab displays a single person record at a time. The Institutions tab displays a single institution at a time. A database can have many records of a given type. On the bottom portion of the window, you will see a set of controls that are always present regardless of which tab is active. The four buttons on the lower left navigate between different records. The large box in the middle is where you can quickly search for records. The four buttons on the right are the main command buttons that allow you to save or undo changes to records or delete or create new records. The record tab also has a number of fields that are specific to that record type. Fields are individual pieces of information that are part of a record. For example, person records have fields such as last name, first name, and specialty. By editing the information in these fields, you can modify the record's data. The changes will automatically be saved to the record once you navigate to a different record or change to a different tab. The purpose of the Accept Edits button is to commit changes to the record without navigating away from it. Now, let's start over with a blank database. When you start Hypernomicon for the first time, no database will be loaded. To create a new one, select File, New Database. You are then prompted to select an empty folder that will contain the database and its files. With the new blank database, we will start by entering some information about a debate, the free will paradox. First, Go to the Problems Debates tab. All Debates is a debate record that every database has and its ID number is always 1. Debates are arranged in a tree structure and this record is the trunk of that tree. All other debates are sub-debates under this most general record. The lower right panel of the Problems Debates tab shows any sub-debates under the debate record currently showing. By clicking New, we can create a new debate record that is automatically assigned as a sub-debate of the current debate, and the new debate will be the one showing in the Problems Debates tab. Notice that there are now two debate records in the database, whereas there were previously only one, and the new record has the ID 2. Let's type a name for the new record in the Name field. Directly below the name is a list showing the larger debates that this record is a subdebate under. Note that the All Debates record now shows here. There are three ways that I could navigate back to the All Debates record. By clicking Go next to it in the Larger Debates list. By clicking the Back Navigation button that goes to the most recent record displayed. Or by clicking the Next button which navigates to the next debate record in alphabetical order. The large area in the middle of the tab is the record's description. The description is a field that can hold formatted text of any length. Here is where you can enter any notes about the record that might be useful. In this case, I will add a description of the paradox. Now, let's add a position to this debate. The lower left panel of the Problems Debates tab shows positions that might be taken on this particular debate. I will add a new one by clicking New. Now, a position record has been created, and it is now the record showing. 
Since it is a position record, the Positions tab is now active. Directly below the name field, there is a list showing the debates that this record is a position under. Notice that the Free Will Paradox debate record has been automatically added. The name of this position will be Libertarianism. Notice also that the debate record has been added to the description field. When the description field is not empty, you must double click on it to edit it. Now I will enter a description. Now that we have a position record, we can record any arguments that have been made for that position, who made them, and the works where they were made. The lower left panel of the Positions tab shows a list of arguments that have a conclusion about this position, either for or against. Before adding an argument record, I will add a record for the person who made the argument by first going to the Persons tab and clicking Create New. The person's name is Charles Arthur Campbell. To add a new work record with Campbell automatically assigned as the author, click New Work. A dialog then opens to allow you to select a PDF file to assign to this work. If the information about the work cannot be automatically determined from the PDF file itself, it will also open the PDF file to allow you to copy and paste the title and other information. You are then presented with a dialog window with a list of steps to import the PDF file. The file will be automatically renamed based on information that is entered here. Now that we have entered database records for the author and work in which the argument for libertarianism occurs, we can go back to the Positions tab and add the argument. Click New in the Arguments list. A window is presented with options for creating the argument record. I can now select Campbell as the person who makes the argument. I can also indicate the work that the argument occurs in by selecting Existing Work and choosing the work that we just added. After clicking OK, my newly created argument record is now showing. Libertarianism has been added to the list of positions towards the top of the tab. In Defense of Free Will by Campbell is showing in the list at the bottom of the tab, which shows authors and works where this argument is made. I can now double click to edit the description and add a description of the argument. Now is a good time to demonstrate one of Hypernomicon's most important features. One quickly notices in this debate that determinism is a word that gets used often. It may be helpful, therefore, to create a term record for determinism. To do that, go to the Terms tab and click Create New. The name for this record will be Determinism. To get the definition of this term, it might help to consult the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. This can be done by clicking the SEP button which will automatically open a web browser and search the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy for the text that has been entered in the name field. Now I will copy and paste the definition from my web browser into my description field. I can also add a web link in the description to indicate that the Stanford Encyclopedia article is the source. The final step for creating a term record is to enter a search key. The purpose of search keys in Hypernomicon is that in any record's description where the search key is mentioned, a hyperlink back to the record having that search key will be automatically created. Here I will enter D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-I-S. That way, any occurrence of a word containing that sequence of letters, like determinism, determinist, determinists, or deterministic, will link back to this term record. To demonstrate, let's go back to the debate record for the free will paradox. Now, occurrences of the word determinism have been replaced with a hyperlink back to the term record we just created. Many other types of records besides terms can also have search keys. In fact, search keys for person and work records are generated automatically. If we go back to the person record for Charles Campbell, we can see that a number of search keys are listed, separated by semicolons. Text containing these search keys will link back to this person record. Let's also add a search key to the position record for libertarianism and the debate record for the free will paradox. Now, inspired by Campbell's argument, suppose I get a new idea for a paper. 
First, I will create a folder to hold related files. File folders that pertain to specific topics, activities, or projects should be created under the Topical folder of the database. This can be accessed from the Folders menu. First, I will create a folder to hold my projects. Next, I will create a folder for my new paper project. Back in Hypernomicon, I will create a note record to correspond to my projects folder and another one to correspond to my free will paper project. On the Notes tab, the All Notes record that is automatically created with any new database will be the only note record that exists so far. To create a new note, I will click New in the bottom panel that lists subnotes under the current note. To assign the note to the folder I created, I click the ellipsis button next to the folder field. I am then prompted to choose the folder to assign. Now I will assign the free will project folder to its note record. If I plan to work on this project frequently in the near future, I can add this note record as a favorite, making it conveniently accessible at any time from the main menu. I will now add some text to the note about my project. When I click Accept Edits, the changes are committed to the record and the description changes from Edit Mode to Display Mode. But now, notice that several search keys have been detected in the description I entered and hyperlinks have been added automatically. I can now easily access the records for Charles Campbell, Libertarianism, and Determinism by these links. You may have also noticed the Key Works field that appears when editing descriptions. This is a feature that allows you to specify that a given work is highly relevant to the record in question. A key work can easily be added by selecting the work and clicking Add. Now a link to that work will appear at the top of the description. One convenient thing about hyperlinks that lead to work records is that I can easily open the PDF file corresponding to the work by right-clicking it or secondary-clicking it if using a Mac. When I click to access the work record, it will now show on the work tab that this work is a key work for one record. Also, if I go to the person record for Charles Campbell, my project record will be listed because he is the author of a key work for that record. The number of places that relevant connections between records are indicated automatically grows as you add information, so you are constantly reminded of how things are connected. In general, wherever records are presented in a list, you can go to one of those records by double-clicking on it. Another feature that allows you to indicate that records are highly relevant to each other is the ability to embed one record's description within another record's description. For example, let's set the description of the libertarianism record to be displayed in the note for our new project. To do this, when editing the description for the project record, click the Edit Layout button. This allows you to edit how information is laid out when the description is in display mode. Select the record whose description will be embedded and click Insert. Now, when we accept edits, we can see that the description for the libertarianism record is now embedded. Click the triangle to show the description. Now, I don't have to navigate back to the libertarianism record to be reminded of its definition. When I go to the libertarianism record, it will now show in its description that this record's description is set to display in the project record. I will be reminded of my project and be able to easily access it whenever I navigate to the libertarianism record. Note also that the debate record for the free will paradox was already embedded in the description for libertarianism. This is because, when you create a new position record, its debate is automatically embedded in the position description. Similarly, when you create an argument record, the description for the position is automatically embedded. We have now created several records that are related in various ways. To get a higher level view of these records, we can click the Tree button, which takes us to the Tree tab. The Tree tab shows various kinds of records and how they are hierarchically organized. 
From here, it is possible to modify how records are related by dragging and dropping. By clicking Show Description, it is also possible to view the description of whichever record is currently selected. Finally, even though we have created some records and committed changes to the database, these changes are not permanent until the database is saved to XML files. This is done automatically whenever you exit the application or load a different database, but it can also be done at any time by clicking the Save to XML button. Now I will end this video by demonstrating an example of the payoff once you have entered a decent amount of information in your database. Suppose I am thinking about the notion of non-conceptual content and trying to decide what my own view about it is. I can press Ctrl F or Command F on a Mac to do a record search for non-conceptual content. Looking at the description I have entered for this debate, I realize that I have forgotten what notes I might have written in the entry for concept. So on a momentary whim, I click on that word. I am then reminded of a quotation from Davidson I wrote down about a year ago, which states that being able to discriminate cats is not the same thing as having the concept of a cat. You have the concept of a cat only if you can make sense of the idea of misapplying the concept. This causes me to make a novel connection. Perhaps non-conceptual content is a type of content that, unlike conceptual content, cannot be misapplied, and this is the key to understanding the distinction. An important insight that I might never have had otherwise is only a click away. The more information you add to your database, the more often you will randomly discover connections that will inspire you in ways you can't predict. Now that you are familiar with the basic user interface and some of the important features, you are ready to explore Hypernomicon yourself and to view other videos that go into particular features in more depth. Thanks for watching.